Anyway. Hello, Internet. Hey, Internet. What up? How you all doing out there? Um, I guess we're just going to get this thing started. Um, my name is Darius Kazemi. Uh, I work at Boku on... Well, I'm director of community development here, but I also work on HTML5 game development stuff. Um, and uh, mostly I teach a course with... Uh, I teach a class with, uh, with Greg over here. And, um, uh, again, I've worked in the game industry for about 10 years, uh, but I've been doing the HTML5 stuff for the last uh, two or three. And, uh, yeah, Greg? Yeah, I'm Greg. Um, I work at Boku also. I'm, my official title is Internet Programmer. Extraordinaire. And um, I've, I, do run the, uh, I do a course with Darius that he just mentioned. I also do a HTML5, kind of a general HTML5 crash course for people wanting to pick up those technologies. I do consulting, which has involved some non-game stuff and some reporting mobile games, HTML5 platform stuff. And um, right now, my uh, primary task is to build new game stuff, which is uh, maintained by Boku and sponsored by Microsoft. And uh, so let's start this out with the very important question. Darius, what are you playing right now? Oh, what am I playing? Well, for starters, uh, I'm playing a lot of uh, FTL. It's awesome. I didn't actually back the Kickstarter when it happened, but... Oh! I know, totally. right? I'm such a jerk. But <laughs> uh, but as as Greg is, I'm also a fan of roguelikes or games with randomly generated content and that sort of thing. And FTL is just a great... Basically, it's a Star Trek simulator, but not like the, oh, you know... I've seen some Star Trek simulators that are pretty technical or pretty abstract. And this one's much more like, send this person to the bridge, send that person to the engine room because it's on fire, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, and I really love that. Um I'm also playing Tokyo Jungle right now. Have you heard of Tokyo Jungle, Craig? I have not. It's, it's on PSN, and it's a game where they don't explain why, at least at first. Um, all the humans, like, just disappeared, mm -hmm. and the game takes place five years later. Tokyo has turned into a jungle, and you're playing animals, like zoo animals and pets and stuff like that that have gone feral. And uh, you start as a Pomeranian, and then you <laughs> unlock other animals. And you're basically like... It's the only game where I've ever been, like, a Pomeranian and tried to, like, eat a giraffe, a live giraffe. And I wouldn't feel like I would be... I don't think I'd feel incentive to be anything but a Pomeranian. Well, there's beagles um, and <laughs> chimps, and you can, you, know, you can be a baby chick. That's, like, the hard mode. Baby <laughs> chick. Little baby <laughs> chick. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, <laughs> the other thing I'm playing right now is a game called Mercury by James Lance. Um, actually... I'm, I actually, it's on my list of things that I really want to play. I haven't had time, but it's a cool concept uh, where basically it's like a roguelike, but players contribute. They design their own monsters, and then you mm. play against monsters that other players have designed. And there's a whole cool, like, meta structure to it that makes it, like, really engaging. So it happens in basically, like, episodes or cycles, and every cycle brings in, like, is sort of co-designed by everyone who played the last one. Cool. Yeah. How about you? Um, I've been playing Resonance of Fate on the Xbox 360. Basically, I saw a video of the combat and said, that looks nifty. And I didn't realize I would actually like it, because I use Gamefly, which, if you're not familiar, is like Netflix for games. They send you DVDs for $15 a month. And so I play a lot of games for like an hour and then send them back. And uh, it, I, I kept playing it. I think I put like 12 hours into it so far. It's like this, the setting is this gorgeous, like, industrial steampunk futuristic thing and it's all like gun battles and the title screen the, the map screen is like hexagonal grids that you unlock yeah, it's, it's uh it's turn-based combat right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that, i played that for like, like a few hours it was pretty awesome yeah the, the combat is turn-based and also it's like while you're walking enemies can walk too but if you stand still nothing's happening around you right so it's turn-based but simultaneous yes uh, that is exactly it and I've also been playing Harvest Moon, whatever the 3DS iteration of that is. I haven't played any of them since the SNES one. That it's got harvests and moons in it, so. You know. Yeah. Well, it's the first time I played since the SNES one that my sister and I were obsessed with, and I was kind of like, "Oh, this is super cute. I'll buy it for my." And I really enjoy it. If you, what it really boils down to, for like explaining it to somebody who thinks that sounds like an unfun game. It's kind of like a scheduling problem plus a crafting system. 
but also your pet cute cows. So it kind of comes, meets in the middle there. Um, those are kind of the main games I'm playing at the moment. Yep. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Uh, what about? Uh, oh, hold on. You you mentioned one more game to me. Uh, you were showing me um, uh, Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, Dimensions. So I, I haven't played it much. Munch. <laughs> I haven't played it much. But on the iPhone, they released a uh, Final Fantasy game called Final Fantasy Dimensions. That, as I understand it, was a bunch of uh, smartphone Final Fantasy like episodic games that they released in Japan for a while. It looks like this and sounds like this. And um, I think they basically just released it in the U.S. translated. And it's kind of um, it's uh, it uses the you can buy each episode separately or as a quantity discount. And it's kind of cool. It has like I, it's nice to see that people making classic console games on touch devices are starting to figure out how to do the controls. Because at first it was just that static gamepad, and that was awful. And now what it kind of has is like when you touch the screen, a gamepad appears where you happen to touch it, and then you slide in the direction you want to go. So there's no missing because you, the center is just wherever you touched it. So there, there are, people are kind of working on that idea and getting it right, which is kind of nice to see because you can play with an RPG. I can play with one hand on the subway, and I, I like that. Yeah, while you're holding on for dear life with the other hand. Yeah, on the on the good nine. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, I, I actually did want to talk briefly about another game that I've been playing recently. Um, uh, hold on, let me. I'm gonna pull it up and show it to people. Um, uh, if I think it's well, hold on. It's, so it's made by Mary Rose Cook. It's called uh, Empty Black. Empty like not full. Black like <laughs> color. Um, and I'm going to see if I can pull this up on my screen share here. Um, screen share. Share. Yeah, so it's at um, emptyblack.com. Greg, are we, are we seeing that, the game? Yeah, here? that's great. Sweet. Um, so, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can sl I'll, I'll select a later level. It's running a little slowly on my machine right now because I'm trying to you know, I'm screencasting at the same time uh, on the Google Hangout, but um, it's a really minimalist um, shooter game with like a sort of a grappling hook type of mechanic, um, and, and then there's, there's shooting and stabbing. I just <laughs> stabbed someone, uh, and then shooting, and it's all it's an HTML5 game. Um, there we go. Um, what I love about it is the level design is really simple. Um, I love it. There's no HUD. In, I don't know if you noticed, but your health and the enemy's health is actually just how filled in your square is. So that square that I'm controlling is like nine little squares inside it, and they kind of go away slowly uh, as you get hit. Um, and I just love what Mary's done with the level design here. Um, it's obviously very minimalistic, but I think it's it's super effective. Um, uh, it's um, uh, the, it's one of those games that introduces a new element, but like forces you to learn how to deal with that new element, and then never it'll present that element to you again in interesting ways. But it's never going to uh, bore you by giving you the same challenge twice. That's what I like best about this game. I, I never do the same thing twice. It's pretty short. I think it's eight or nine levels, and it took me maybe half an hour to beat. Um, pretty much just a perfect like bite-sized uh, game to play. Um, and uh, Mary's a great developer, and um, I think it was made an impact, although I'm not 100% sure. Um, mm. That's just me guessing from the loading bar. I haven't actually looked at the source mm. code yet. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Empty Black. I definitely recommend checking that out as an as an awesome HTML5 game. Yeah, I like games that you were saying it doesn't repeat in gameplay elements and except to show them in a, a unique way, and that's kind of the the the. Games don't tol we don't tolerate filler like we used to. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I, I don't think I ever tolerate. No, that's that's, that's not true. I tolerated filler no. when I was a kid. I had nothing one, better to do. If you played one SNES RPG. Yeah, but I was a kid. I had nothing better to do with my time. I it's would just sit summer. there and yeah. grind all summer. It was like, well, I'm going to go outside and play with the other kids, or play Earthbound in the attic. No, those other kids. I'm going to play Earthbound in the attic. That's yes. that's how I'm spending my summer, and it's a summer well spent. I might add. 
Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of, in terms of other games I've been playing, especially HTML5 games, I actually just um, uh, was a judge in this uh, JS13K games competition. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it was a competition run uh, just so that people could make games in HTML5 and JavaScript in uh, less than 13K of um, of code. Um, so there were a bunch of different, like, you know, themes and rules around it and so forth, but um, I think I'll, I'll turn on my screen share and show off a few of the, the winning games that I thought were pretty neat. I always um, enjoy walking around the office and I glance over and Darius is judging some game that I, I get to be a, a secret early observer of. Yeah, so if you go to js13kgames.com, you can see any of these. Uh, let me see, is, my, uh, is the screen share? Yeah, the screen share is working. Um, so the first place one I thought was just really cool. It's, um, it's called Space Pie. And what I like best about it uh, and why it got, I think, I, gave, I definitely gave it a lot of points. What I like best about it is that it's a complete game. There's like a whole like upgrade chain and a menu system. And a lot of the other games were kind of demos of games. Uh, so you would get the idea of the core mechanic. But this was like a full... Thing there were 13 different levels and um, I can't buy anything right now but I can play the first level here and um, it's a pretty simple uh, game where you're just trying to defend this central planet from uh, incoming lasers and I'm just sitting here blowing them up and as I blow them up it they release coins and stuff that I can mouse over to collect um, and it's just the kind of thing where yeah it's in 13k but like the game's done that's it um, this is everything that it needs to be to be a full game. And, uh, yeah, so the level's over. I completed it, and now I have 20 bucks. And if I had enough money, I could upgrade some of this stuff. So that's so that's so that was that was the first place winner. Um, and, uh, oh, and then I got to show. I'll show the first three. The yeah, Sucker yeah. is just... Is just incredible. I love this game. <laughs> this is it's a really it's like an abstract pixely game, but it's also um, really really uh, bloody. Uh, so two, two, we go. You have a weak stomach. Just look away from the hangout for a minute. Yeah, I guess so. Like so, here I am. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so I'm just kind of like sucking their blood until they explode. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty... Whoa, all right, I just jumped. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just loved its sense of style, and uh, once you get enough enemies on the screen, the combination of like the old-school sound effects and um, just all the blood going on, you can get these ridiculous multipliers, and it's just it's just a f- fun, fun game to play. It's a great time waster for maybe, you know, 10 minutes in the office while you're waiting for something to... Some, waiting for a meeting to start or something. So, um, so yeah, that's that's the sucker. Um, and then, let me close that. And then, the, hopefully, this one will run on my laptop. I haven't tried it yet. This one's a WebGL game made by Chanda Prawl, who is a uh, friend of Boku. Um, click to start. Yeah. So this uses WebGL, and it's a freaking like full 3D game where you're walking around, and there's a whole story you can see down here. It tells you about all the infected zombies in this lab, and like zooms in on these people with the camera like it, it's almost like a like a PlayStation 1 era um, 3D game um, and, yeah and it's really clever um, the, the whole plot is clever and I just I really liked it a lot and it's incredibly impressive for what it does in 13k of uh, JavaScript and WebGL and HTML5 stuff so, uh, so yeah, those are the those are the top three uh, picks from the JS 13K game competition, and all, all the winners. And in fact, even the ones that didn't win, like a lot of them are really, really worth playing. And um, uh, there's a there's a great one called At Sea. It's a fishing sim that I love. It's just so relaxing to play. Anyhow, yeah. So that's the JS 13K games combo. Cool. Um. So, so I actually wanted to. Because you made this cool demo earlier today. So recently, iOS 6 was released. And with iOS 6 comes web audio for the built-in Safari, uh, right, in iOS 6, right? Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, um, 
Web Audio API is has been traditionally just in Google Chrome for desktop, not even the mobile version. Uh, and it's essentially a better web audio implementation than the audio tag. The audio tag for HTML5 is meant for streaming audio, which is great for playing background music for games or streaming podcasts or that kind of stuff. But if you've ever if you've ever used the audio tag before, you'll know that it has really bad latency issues. You'll play an animation and then try and synchronize the audio with it, and the audio might not ever trigger, or it might trigger a second later or something. And web audio is um, uh, web audio actually like buffers the audio in memory so it can access it very quickly and play it back, like you might expect from FMOD or something else if you were developing on a more traditional platform. And you can um, do wave level synthesis and um, filtering and modification of sounds. As yeah, playing. yeah, exactly. It's got support for DSP and that's a, that sort of stuff, which is which is also great. Um, and so, Greg, yeah, you built something today, right? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll tell a little bit more of the story first. Um, yeah. So basically, you know, Web Audio API was in Chrome for a while, and Firefox had their own different API that did some of the same stuff. And this appearing in iOS 6 is as the second browser that has one of these APIs is really exciting because, one, it's the first time we've seen that we're kind of moving in the direction of choosing one of these APIs for the other, which we kind of need. The web just needs to unify around one of them. And also the fact that it's mobile is really interesting. It means that um, you know sound is a huge part of your experience playing games, and so it's a... It's great for HTML5 games in general, and it's great for mobile games uh, using uh, HTML. Right, because the mobile Safari prior to iOS 6 would only support one sound at a time, right? So you couldn't even have background music and sound effects. Yeah, yeah. So this is the So I just made... I couldn't find a bite-sized demo just to prove that it worked, prove to myself and to other people. So I made this. If you go to... Um, actually, I'm going to put the URL up on the screen real quick. I have to type it. I have to remember what it is and then type it. Webaudio.incompol.com. So if you go to that URL on your uh, iPhone, you'll get this guy. And there's five different, four different notes that you can just turn on separately from each other. I don't know if you can hear this. Hooray! See me bowing. Can't really see it all. And um, so it works. Hooray! And um, we're, we're really excited about this, especially since um, making H mobile HTML5 games is something I want to more of. So. Oh, Darius's name is still there. Um, yeah, it, actually, give me. One second, I need to plug into power here because I, oh, I forgot to charge okay. my laptop. I uh, do you need. Whoa, where's Darius? Darius. Darius, honey. <laughs> You're leaving Greg alone in the scary internet. So, um, the library I used, I'm just going to talk while Darius does his thing. The uh, library I used to do this thing is called Timber.js, and it's basically a wrapper on top of the Web Auto API. I actually um, just, learned, I'll just used it for the first time this morning to make this demo. And it's really nice, because the, what the API kind of looks like is like you create an object that is your sound, and then you say, um, add a uh, sine wave at uh, 523.35 hertz, which you look up on the internet and you're like, oh, that's, that's C. That's the mode of C. And then, you know, in my demo, I basically just looked up on Wikipedia what's a G major chord, and then I looked up on another site what frequencies are those, and then I, you know, the API was quite simple and it was really, uh, really nice. I could totally see making a game with that library. Oh, uh, John back, and actually Chandler Prowl, who made the Mindless demo, the 3D zombie game, has informed me on IRC that uh, it's actually a uh, full, it's a 2D canvas game. So it's not WebGL, it's, uh, um, it's rendered on canvas, which oh. is pretty cool. That is really cool. That sounds hard. <laughs> yeah, he says he stole the math lib from 3JS, but the rest is all new code that he did, so. Okay. Freaking okay. awesome. Yeah, that's really impressive, actually. 
Cool. So I want to hear uh, what you're working on, Darius. What am I working on right now? Oh, okay. Um, I haven't done any game stuff in the last couple of weeks, but the last major thing that I did was um, Spelunky HTML5. Um, so um, I guess I'll put the URL in my little uh, bar here um, if it fits, because it's a pretty long URL. Yeah. I should have just done a. I really should have just done a bitly link thing, but does that? No, nope, that doesn't fit. No, it's, I can. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. Hold on. Maybe so that, I, get rid um, of the, that. That works. Okay. Huh. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I've been meaning to port Spelunky to HTML5 for a long time. A little bit of history with this is that when Spelunky, so Spelunky was originally written in Game Maker, and when Spelunky came out, um, I got way into it and wanted to mod it. So I actually started to learn Game Maker. You can pretty easily decompile an executable in in Game Maker and import it into Game Maker itself and start to play with it. For those of you who don't know, Game Maker is it's kind of an all-in-one game development environment that has its own scripting language and its own asset management and uh, lets you set up rooms and scenes and, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, I like it especially for prototyping because I can work really fast in Game Maker, but also as Spelunky showed, Game Maker is a perfectly reasonable thing to make a production quality game in as well. Right. Um, and in September of 2010, 2011, I forget. September 2011, I think. Um, no, tw geez. Yeah, 2011. Okay, God, I'm all over the place. What year, what year um, is it? It's 2012 right now. So, yeah, this was September 2011. Um, oh, God, I've traveled backwards. I know, right? Um, uh, Yo Yo Games released. Game Maker HTML5, which was basically just a way to take uh, a Game Maker game and compile it to JavaScript uh, and Canvas and all that good stuff. And what um, uh, what I did, the first thing that I tried when it came out was to just like put Spelunky in there and see if I could import it and just export it to HTML5 with one button press. And it just crashed and burned horribly. But that's because <laughs> that was that was like the beta. You know, it was like their first. It was their first private release. Um, uh, so I just let a bunch of time pass, and uh, once Game Maker HTML5 got stable, I tried again, and this time it kind of worked in that it didn't <laughs> immediately crash. And so then it was just a long process of because I knew the Spelunky source code really well from uh, uh, from modding it, I was able to sort of, uh, and because I'm an HTML5 dev, I was able to use a combination of the Game Maker debugger. And like Chrome Inspector, and figure out where it was crashing and burning, and then either removing that feature from the game temporarily, like for example, audio just totally crapped out because yeah, Spelunky yeah. relied on an external DLL for audio, and so I had to go and like I just I ripped out all the audio calls, and that really helped. Um, and then um, uh, and then from there it was just it was just an unsexy process of. <laughs> of fixing bugs, but it only took like probably four or five hours total, I think, um, and I got Spelunky working in HTML5, so that was really cool. And then I sent it to the, to the Yo-Yo Games guys who make Game Maker, and they polished it up and made it look really nice, so like half of what you see when you go to the URL here is not my work, it's the Yo-Yo Games guys. I just did the initial like get the game working um, stuff, so, so yeah. Awesome. Oh, and then uh, I also have a mod that I wanted to start working on uh, well, because, well, I love that um, I love that uh, you know HTML5 games. You can just send a link to someone, and it's there, and they'll just open it up in their browser and, and see right. it happening right there. So yes. what I want to do, I think the most interesting part of Spelunky to most people is how the level generation works because mm -hmm. um, it has these randomly generated platformer levels. <clears throat> Excuse me, and what I want to do is take Splunky and mod it to just expose the level generation algorithms. So you could basically step it through rendering an entire level and tweak different variables and that sort of thing. So like, oh, what would happen if I increased the spider spawn chance from, you know, this to twice as much? Oh, well, there's a lot more spiders, or whatever. Um, so that's the idea for the Splunky mod that hopefully I can get around to doing sometime in the next six months. Um, how about you, Greg? What have you been working on? 
Well, one thing you reminded me of that I just wanted to say real quick is that there, I heard you talk about spunkly, spelunky, that I pronounce a little differently every time, I think, spelunkle. Every, many times you always raved about it, and I am a Mac person, so I was never able to play it until a, f a few months ago, I think, the, uh, the Xbox Live Arcade version came out. That was kind of a, a port, I guess, that was kind of, kind of different, but uh, I finally got to play it, and I, I loved it. I, I was really excited that uh, they came out with that port, so if you haven't played Spelunky and that's what's going to get you to do it, you should do that. So in terms of your actual question, what have I been working on? Well, I've got this game down here called 91 that I've been working on for maybe about three years or so. Uh, it's like off and on in my spare time, so that three years probably doesn't mean a whole lot at all. It's almost a coincidence. And right now I'm writing the ending, and that's really kind of amazing to be working on. It's a, it's a it's an RPG, so you know it has a, a narrative arc, and it kind of you play it start to finish. It's a, it's a roguelike in the sense that it's ASCII art and it's turn based and it's a dungeon crawler, but at the same time it's a it has a there's no random generation at all. It's preset dungeons that have more environmental puzzles akin to something like Zelda. And it's also in a modern setting, so it's got a little bit of uh, Earthbound in there and a little bit of uh, <laughs> occasional surreal oddness, <laughs> also all la Earthbound. Um, I guess the second time Earthbound has come up, right? Was, we, we both really love that game. Well, it's the, it's the most important game ever oh. made, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited for writing the end of that. I'm going to. Uh, there's a demo you can play it at the CRL, but um, I haven't. I, it's not real time. I'm kind of pushing updates every now and then. As soon as I write the ending, I'm going to push an update that will basically be the beta, which will be you can play this game start to finish, but there's a lot of stuff that needs more work, and that's really exciting. So besides that, a little while ago, I uh, muted my phone, and then. <laughs> That wasn't that long ago, I admit. I made, <laughs> I made this little, uh, I kind of had this idea in my dreams once. I woke up one morning and I said, I need to make an interactive fiction game that only accepts one word commands. And I got out of bed and got my laptop and made it. In a couple hours I had what I was calling dream, which was this little end, proof of concept for doing that. Um, you know, and then I said, oh, it'd be kind of neat to do a murder mystery or something with this. Then fast forward a few months, I came back to it and I made what I call Dusk, which is a interactive fiction murder mystery that accepts one word commands. It takes about an hour to play. You either win or you lose. It's kind of, it actually, um, did you play Myst, Darius? So, so, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, I played Myst. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you remember the, the basically, that's a the end game of that is you either do the correct thing or you don't do the correct thing. Oh, yeah, end game, not so much. I love that idea of, like, here's this game that takes you hours and hours to play, and you win or lose. And if you lose and you load your game and go back and you figure out what you're supposed to do to win, that's not quite the same as getting it right the first time. And um, so I, that's a kind of experience that games don't usually have, and that's something I, I put into this. It's not quite as much of an investment, but I think that's actually uh, an interesting game design concept that I haven't seen a lot of. Um, it's usually just you die trying a million times and eventually you beat it. So there's that. Um, what else am I working on? Um, I have some ideas for some, a, a mobile game I'd like to do, and it's no surprise that this is Rogue-inspired. But I guess it's probably, at this point, far enough away from roguelikes to say maybe it's just a mobile dungeon crawler. What I want to have is a like completely uh, lazy one hand. I'm on the subway holding on to the bar, and I'm so tired. I stayed up till 3 programming, and I couldn't get out of bed. And I want to play a dungeon crawler on my phone while I go to work with maybe one to two percent of my brain, but I still want it to be good. I want that one to two, one to two percent of my brain to be really stimulated. And so I'm playing around with ideas for something that's kind of like roguelike, but like the whole room is it's room based. So there, your screen on your phone is a room, and you 
tap on things to interact with them, and some of the things you might interact with are doors. So I'm, I'm playing around with an idea like that. I hope, I hope it comes to fruition. And uh, what else? Oh, I also made a... So my library box box. Actually, let me put the URL for that up. And I have to remember what that URL is. Ah, and that's the first Google results. So I made a library called Boxbox, which is just a, uh, a framework or a wrapper for using um, Box2D Web, which is a port of a C++ physics engine that eventually <laughs> made its way to JavaScript. And um, basically, this makes it a lot easier to use. It makes it more object-oriented and gives you some sugar and all that stuff. So I was making a platform game with Boxbox and adding the kinds of features it would need to use it as a game framework rather than just a physics library. So kind of a little bit of object model stuff, a little bit of event handling stuff. And um, I kind of worked on that for a while and then realized I don't want to make this whole game because it's biting off more than I can chew as another long-term side product project. But I, I am going to release it as a proof of concept of, look, if you're ever to make a big game with Boxbox, this is probably how you would organize your code. And this shows that it, it would work. You, you could totally do it. And uh, yeah, that's that's what that's everything I've been working on. Sweet. Um, I want to give a little shout out to my friend Kirk uh, because we were talking about this in the Boku IRC channel. Um, he made a um, a library called well, it's not a library. It's mostly just a little wrapper thing um, called Lolag. Um, I'm gonna put that up on my little banner thing here, uh, lolag.alienbill.com. Um, and uh, what it does is it's basically just a, a, it looks at what browser you're in, and it, Kirk did a whole bunch of testing to see how um, different audio solutions um, performed uh, in terms of latency on different browsers. And it just looks at what browser you're in and what platform you're on, and then it says, oh, OK, you're in Chrome so on desktop, so we're going to use web audio to play sound effects. And oh, you're in Internet Explorer, so we're going to use Sound Manager 2 and let Sound Manager 2 handle that, um, and so on and so forth. Um, you'd think that Sound Manager 2 itself would, would handle this, but actually it has pretty bad latency issues on certain combinations of, of some certain browsers, I guess. Um, so anyway, it's a really simple wrapper. Um, you can grab it at the website that I have up here. Um, and it's uh, the API is very simple. Once you've actually installed it, it's pretty much just like load sound, play sound. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of demos on there. Uh, and there's even a sandbox page where you can force different audio solutions. So if you're in whatever browser, um, you can go to the sandbox and you can say, OK, first use low lag and just let low lag decide. And you can play around and go, oh, that's really responsive. And then you can force, uh, you know, HTML5 audio tag, and maybe that one's, you know, not as good. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it lets you um, it lets you test the browser for yourself, just in case you weren't uh, convinced that you know <laughs> web audio tag was enough or something. So um, so yeah, uh, Kirk Israel, uh, low lag JS, uh, definitely worth. I'm definitely going to put it in the next uh, HTML5 game that I make. Um, and then we got about 10 minutes left here, so um, I wanted to ask you, Greg, a little bit about uh, the project you've been working on here at Boku yeah. uh, called uh, Build New Games. Uh, what's that all about? What is it all about? Buildnewgames.com. There it is. Um, so basically, it's a site we're, doing, we're running that's, um, we're approaching authors who are you know good with making HTML5 games. And what we want to do is teach people who are already web designers or web developers how to make games because um, making a uh, making a website and making a high performance game has oh, there's a lot of difference in the skill sets there. And oh, there it is. <laughs> it's very purple. And um, also, we want to teach maybe game designers who are maybe have been making games in C++ a little bit about how the web works. And so, um, basically, what, what I've been doing is, you know, tech reviewing and talking to these authors and keeping things coming. And we've, we've got some really good content lately. Recently, um, um, 
Eric Lee did this article about optimizing web sockets bandwidth, which is really hardcore. Basically, one of the things that uh, you have to realize if you're using, say, socket IO, all of the data is sent in JSON. And uh, although it's no XML, JSON is still a little verbose. And it, you can, you know, you can send, uh, not, uh, if not bi binary, much tighter representations of your data. And uh, he goes into doing that and then talking about um, encoding optimizations and uh, compression stuff. So that's really good if you're making a very network intensive game. Um, another article that uh, we did recently was uh, about uh, a comparison of JavaScript physics engines. Uh, All right. That one is just great. It goes through uh, box 2D, and it goes through, uh, you scroll down a little bit. It is box 2D web, right? Yeah. And for each one, there's a, a working demo in the article that shows a scene that will have uh, balls dropping from the top. Actually, um, can you press play on that, Darius? I'm trying to press play. It's, uh, I think it maybe didn't load the fiddle all the way. I'm just going to reload the page. OK. Let's try that again. Um, for whatever reason, it's crapping out on my machine right now. Oops. It's sleepy. I'll try one of the other ones. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was just the scene. Oops. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, so that was user error on my part. Great. Um, so this one's box 2D, uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a cool little Yeah, general. it's really cool that not only does it talk about these physics engines, it shows the same uh, scene implemented in each one, so you can see how they look working and also look at all the threats for all of those. I think that's uh, really useful. So we've also got a couple of really cool articles coming up soon. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about them. You'll have to you'll have to wait. But one of them is uh, we've got kind of more physics stuff coming up. We've got something about physics concepts. That, ooh, snap! Yeah, <laughs> physics concepts you need to know, which is um, a, you know a little bit of a uh, little bit of academic nostalgia for maybe some people, and um, another one that's about. Uh, the implementation of uh, so those are going to be some really good ones, especially for people like me, uh, who uh, might all the Darius is from the game industry. I've really been a web developer who made games in the spare time for most of uh, my programming days. So this these bits of articles are great for me to understand, like I, you know, what is collision detection all about? I, I, it's good to know how it works if you're going to be using these libraries. To do it. So uh, yeah, so building games, you know, like I said, um, it's about HTML5 games, but it's also about um, browser agnostic HTML5 games. Don't be scared that there's a certain browser's logo on the homepage or anything like that. This is about stuff that this is about the open web. This is about stuff that'll, uh, you know, what. This is about the HTML5 uh, cross-platform stuff. So. Um, that's really exciting to be able to uh, help people make games like that and also help myself make games in the process. <laughs> it is always nice when someone asks me a question about some aspect of HTML5 game dev. I'm just like, oh, just go to buildinggames.com. Here's yeah. a link. That'll explain it. I don't have to anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm lazy. That's why I'm a developer, right? Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all we have on our uh, little schedule here, and uh, um, uh, pretty much all the time that we have. I guess I'll ask uh, the IRC folks: Does anybody have any particular questions that you want us to answer? Um, doesn't look like it. So um, yeah, Greg, any any final thoughts before we uh, sign off? My well, final thoughts are that uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and I, I'm glad we get to do this and uh, talk. Just do what we do all the time, which is talk about HTML5 games. So thank you. Yeah. Um, my final thought is, if you make any cool HTML5 games, please send them to me. 
Um, oh, and hey, wait, we do have a question here uh, from uh, Lucas Rizzoli. He's asking uh, if there are any particular libraries that we'd recommend for mobile game development. Um, is Cocoon the one that's mobile? That's cool. Which one? Cocoon. Oh, Cocoon. Uh, yeah, Cocoon is like a whole solution thing. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, oh, hold on. Lucas is clarifying. He wants to know about input, particularly. Oh, well, not for input, I guess. Not that I not that I know of. Uh, um, although, if you look at um, if you look at the source code for the Akihabara engine, for example, um, that does a sort of virtual uh, joypad overlay thing. If you're interested in that, um, in terms of uh, in terms of touch, um, I know there's been uh, it's it's escaping me, but maybe we're gonna post a list of resources after this hangout, and um, that'll give me some time to actually look up the library that it's escaping me. And but we'll post that up, and people can see that. So. Um, Ray, thanks again, everybody. I think I think we're all set. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye.